So let's talk science of PDRN in skincare. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I'm not gonna lie. This was a really painful one to put together. <sighs> to start, before we dive into any of this, right? Our main focus is always talk about at home topical skincare you can buy on the market and use at home. Mm -hmm. um, but PDRN really has its rooting in office treatment. Mm -hmm. It started out with, you might have heard of its train name Rejuron or Rejuvenex. These are treatments you can get in office. It's basically micro, ne micro needling with PDRN. Because of this, I think nowadays a lot of the new topical tag like exosome actually have this in-office mm -hmm. background. Wading through the data and discerning between more in-office oriented type of treatment Versus home use, it's a nightmare. <laughs> and also, in office, like in office solutions and treatments, is a whole nother realm of wild, yeah. wild west in terms of claims that are stated. Like mm -hmm. in terms of benefits and sourcing, is incredibly mysterious here. So, I'll be honest. Just like Laura mentioned, this is exactly a similar scenario to exosomes. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about topically. So. First, the main question is just how does PDR even work on mm -hmm. skin? Like we mentioned, it targets adenosine receptors. That's a theory that's tested in vitro. Very specifically, the A2A receptors you might see in communications here and there. There's also A1, A2B, A3 receptors. Not gonna get into it, but it focuses <laughs> on the A2A receptor because this one, particularly in skin cells, is associated with regulating inflammatory responses cell proliferation, and also collagen production. At this point of doing the podcast, I feel like everything goes back to collagen. <laughs> <laughs> we will, you know, Gloria found a really great review paper that we think summarizes some of the testing in this realm pretty well. We're actually going to share a snapshot of the compiled testing up here. If you're watching on YouTube, pause and take a minute. It is a big chart. And I do really want to mention that this paper was published December 2024. So. A lot of episodes will mention that like, hey, we might be missing something. Yeah, because yeah, like, might... the best paper, the best review paper we found is actually one that's in 96. Right. Like, yeah. So on and so forth. <laughs> Not the case here. This this tech is new, new. <laughs> yeah. And what's great about it is they've actually broken down the testing based on certain benefits. So they've got a segment on anti-aging, mm -hmm. anti-hyperpigmentation. They're looking at it as an antioxidant as well as even wound healing. And as you scroll down, you will realize... A few things. Uh, first one being the actual number of clinical tests that are relevant and are used as a topical. E Take a moment. It's hard. There's only two. It's 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 so little. <laughs> yeah. So again, going back to what Victoria said, if you look at the first column on mm -hmm. this table, anti-aging, anti-hyperpigmentation, mm -hmm. it looks very robust. Yeah. And and this chart is not short. And you got antioxidant. So you're like, oh wow, this really is a catch-all, like mm -hmm. amazing skin ingredient that does it all. And then you look at the second column, which breaks it down by the source mm -hmm. of PDRN. You're like, okay, I see salmon, I see some trout, I see salmon, 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 <laughs> human, salmon, salmon, salmon. And you realize, hold on, on the market, there's a lot of other source of PDRN. Plant. What do we make of that? We'll get into it. And then you have the third column, which gives you a summary of the test. And like Victoria mentioned, if you scroll down really fast, you're like, okay, okay, look for clinical, look for clinical. Look okay, for in there. vivo, look for in vivo. Yeah, I, I see, oh, 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 I see a couple of clinical trials. Very, very cool. And then you click into it and it is using it as an injection. And some of them, kind of like the foot ulcer study, is using it as a very intensive daily injection to mm -hmm. see that benefit. So mm -hmm. with that, Let's look at the actually relevant. So we're going to, you know, start weeding all these out. The actually relevant clinical testing that uses PDRN as a topical. We've got one. Mm -hmm. Done a test at 40 subjects, Gloria. This is an N equals 40 study or two per group. We do love these two group studies where it is benched against a placebo. So at least we can, un we can say more confidently that the PDRN in the study does something. Mm -hmm. um, so what they did is they used it topically on skin graft sites. And again, going back to what is usually looked at, wound healing, skin re-epithelialization. And what the, at the end of the study, they saw that, I'm going to quote the result here. It says, in the PDRN group, dressing procedure were not painful, whereas in the control, they often were. This wasn't, this didn't come, it was more an, an, an anecdotal comment rather than mm -hmm. a number. But they did measure the re uh, re epithelialization rates in these groups. In the salmon PDRN group, it started as fast as 12.5 days versus in the placebo group, it didn't begin until about 24 days. So you can see that PDRN seems to really promote regeneration and the skin wound healing process. Um, there are no infections. 
I think if you just look at here, you know, this statement, interesting, helps with skin growth. Mm -hmm. This is the problem with topical data, especially like this, is skin graft sites in terms of penetration, very different than just regular healthy skin. Your skin be open already. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And this is why Gloria and I have a lot of concerns because PDRN, for the most part, in terms of data, it really looks like penetration is a really big issue here. Yep. So there's one more study that is done as a topical treatment. And I'm going to read you how it's described in the summary chart we posted this. earlier. So this was filed under scar prevention. Mm -hmm. And they wrote, italicized clinical trial and it says Juicy. pdrn topical apply plus other therapy after 10 days i'm like okay mm -hmm. not a very long time but scar prevention that's pretty cool and in the review paper they said that it decreased global acne scarring system score from 21 down to 15 i was like Seems significant in just 10 days well that's amazing so we pulled the paper and i'm gonna read you the description <laughs> a you heard that correctly a singular <laughs> 43-year-old male present with acne scars since five years ago. Okay. So long-term acne scar. Dermal dermatological findings reveal atrophic acne scars, ice pick, box scar, rolling types on forehead, nose, and cheeks. Diagnosis established as moderate atrophic acne scars with global acne scarring system is 21. Patients were treated with blunt canula subcision, which is basically just cutting scar removal physical <laughs> we're <laughs> using a u-shaped motion and a <laughs> scooping motion for audio and then they and then this patient also got hyaluronic acid filler hmm. microneedling radio frequency oh. a 90 percent trichloroacetic acid chemical reconstruction of skin scars hmm. it's called a tca cross and application of salmon pdrn Woo! And then <laughs> patients received topical 0.05% retinoic acid, 4% niacinamide, and sunscreen daily. Let me just, I wanted to scroll back to what was the actual verbiage used, plus other therapy. <laughs> plus other therapy. You know what's funny is, as you read this, a 43-year-old male, I'm like, okay, I'm out. And then you started talking about <laughs> treatment, I'm like, go on. Yep. Wow. Yes. And Me then thinks this is not an ad for PDRN. <laughs> After all that, in 10 days, the scar score decreased to 15. Like, it better decrease to 15, goddammit. Dude, you threw the kitchen sink at this poor man. He's probably really hurting after all of this. Let me recap, generally speaking, what happened to this guy. They scalped out, they cut out some of the scars, they applied TCA, which is a medium depth, like, peel ingredient. That can't really hurt. And then after that... Microneedling, micro frequency type, and then and you AJ filler. dab on some of that PDRN afterwards and be like, shh, 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 it's okay. And then but it's, also take some tretinoin and yeah. niacinamide. Go and sunscreen. Tret. And sunscreen. <laughs> sunscreen. Don't forget sunscreen. Then 10 days. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm like, I am more offended that that score hasn't gone down to zero yet after all that. Yeah. So, uh... I mean, I got new skin is what I assume happened, I hope. And guess what? That's it. That's Ta -da! all the clinical topical data to share. Yes. All right, we're going to attempt to sum this up really quickly. So based on the review table, first of all, sourcing does matter. Totally. And the most of the testing is still on salmon PDRN. What you can get in office, most of those are salmon PDRN. Very few are actually from human placenta. So that is still what we what we would if you want to try it that's what we would recommend injection yes just get it done in office then in terms of what it does for skin mm -hmm. you will hear pdrm be touted for everything so many things and anything pigmentation pdrn anti-aging pdrn got skin texture issues pdrn antioxidants pdrn Scars? pdrn <laughs> so it's position is everything even topical treatments reading like yes. your marketing your promo i might picture what does this do for me i so that was the thing i wanted to mention was like this whole time we we're talking about this i think every single combo ends is i still don't know what it truly does topically in skincare but mm -hmm. with that and to sum up so Hopefully that gives you a snapshot of the data available. However, the skincare realm has absolutely exploded. And just within us working on this episode, there's been more PDRN launches. Mm -hmm.